Good evening, everyone. And I mean evening in the wee hours of the morning of early Saturday morning, September 14th. Okay, yes, I'm up here on the tube trying to break salacious stories to you and heartfelt stories. All right. News that matters on my YouTube station, Deb Chanel's 48th World. Let's get into it. Okay, but before we do that, have you subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to me? Have you? Have you? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to me. Like and share my videos. Like and share my videos. But don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like, share my videos. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like, share my videos. Okay, but let's get on into it, honey. We got a love letter. We got a love letter to every red-blooded American woman and male out there that's searching for love. A love letter from Ashley Everett. Anybody don't know who she is? Essence Magazine. I'm sure you know who they are, okay, because that's where I got the story from. Talking about black lives, okay, from a black point of view. All right, but we're going to be talking about Ashley Everett. She's Beyonce's main dancer, choreographer. Okay, yes, Miss Ashley. Ashley got engaged, y'all, way back when, maybe two years ago, to a, a dancer. I'm thinking of Beyonce's as well. Or he may have formerly danced with her. But anyway, they met in the industry, okay? And... Beyonce shared her stage, if anybody had eyes to see and ears to hear, uh, on this very provident or uh, prominent day when her boyfriend, longtime boyfriend, asked for her hand in marriage at one of Beyonce's shows, okay? I don't know if she was on tour at the time or she was going on tour, but as we all know, Beyonce let her stage be shared for about maybe 10 to 15 minutes because she was... Uh, you know, she loved her girl. She loved her best captain. And she wanted to see her happy. And she knew that would make her very happy. Plus, you know, Beyonce is one of those uh, sentimental uh, romance type of people. So it's okay. But Ashley, yes, yeah, we're going to get on. Ashley's love letter she wrote to herself, to us, and to her past boyfriend slash fiance, honey. This lady chose Beyonce over her fiance. Now, I ain't got some mess. Okay, but it just depends on how you look at it because I went on and read this article because I was intrigued. Okay, and I couldn't wait to break it to you all on tube. I said, God damn, you know, I'm a lovable person. I love love. I love romance. Now, what happened? So, I, <coughs> excuse me, I took the liberty to go on and read the uh, article for what it was worth. And it was worth it, honey. Ashley. And Beyonce, they're good people. But especially Ashley, because she was like, uh-uh, I got to choose to love myself, my career. I got to be on me. Okay, I got to fall back in love with me because I forgot while I was living for other people, being selfless to other people, I forgot about being selfish for myself. I understood it, y'all. I understood it. I almost caught a tear. Okay, I almost caught a tear because I'm like, okay, this woman has definitely found the true essence of who she is. You got to love and take care of yourself first, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually, before you can take on somebody else's drainage, okay? Baggage, or however you want to see them, okay? You got to see yourself before you can see them. But in my life, you got to see the Lord yourself and then somebody else, all right? But let's get on into this story, because like I said, it was a love story, a love story of how this young lady chose herself and to be in still employment with Beyonce over her fiance. Oh, I like that ring to it. But let's get into it. Okay, let's get into it. Like I said, got the story from Ed, Ed, excuse me, Essence Magazine. Okay, they got a title. They didn't give me who wrote it, but it, I guess it really does. Well, yes, they did. It was written by Jasmine Grant. This was written on my brother's birthday. He's 54 years old. Woo, woo. It was brought out on September 12th. Um, of this year, and like I said, it was written by a journalist, a correspondent person, uh, by the name of Jasmine Grant. So let's give it all up for her. Woo, 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 woo. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, congrats, congrats, congrats for bringing out a salacious, heartfelt story. Yes, and um, the title read How Dancer Ashley Everett ended her engagement and found herself. Okay, 
Beyonce's dance captain, Ashley Ever, opens up about making the tough decisions decision to end a relationship after her onstage proposal went viral and the strength she found within because of it. Okay? Ashley Everett is known to many as the beehive, especially as Beyonce's fierce and talented dance captain. She stood side by side with Queen doing her most iconic performances and has lent her sultry moves to other pop music heavy hitters or heavyweights like Usher, Chris Brown, and Sierra. Her path to success seemed inevitable simply because she saw no other way. For me, it was never an option for a dance not to be a career. I didn't see anything else in my future, she says. Even with a laundry list of career receipts, Ever evokes a humility that was enduring during her first conversation. Like her longtime boss, the highly accomplished dancer values her privacy. It's one of the reasons she's been so quiet about the status of her relationship with fellow dancer John Silver, who got the one in a million chance to propose to her on stage at the St. Louis Leg of the Formation Tour. Okay, so she was on tour. It's not every day that Beyonce lends her stage. Now, you know that's right. Queen Bee's uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, not, no, not this platform. But Beyonce has love for her dancers, or at least some of them, okay? And uh, for this reason, the grand proposal went viral. And Everett and Silver's relationship garnered national-wide attention. With wedding plans in the works and a stunning engagement shoot to match, all signs pointed to a happily wedded bliss on the horizon. After the wedding date came and went, photos of Everett and Silver soon fizzled out. And inquisitive followers looked for clues about whether they had broken up. No, my sidebar, <laughs> the paparazzi were like, okay, girl, and this man proposed to you in a very prominent way. What where y'all at in this stage? Where y'all going? We need to know the how, when, where, why, and how these events are going to turn out or not turn out. Give us the tea. Give us the tea, honey. You know we're going to throw Beyonce name in there so it'll just get more traction out there on the social media streets. Okay. Girl, where is your wedding? Where is your wedding? Now, that's my sidebar. Okay. That's what people wanted to know. Okay. So... It goes back to the article. Forever, it never felt like the right time to publicly address what went down. For one year after what would have been their wedding date, she feels stronger, wiser, and prepared to share the beauty that emerged after closing a painful chapter. And she's going to take us back to the beginning and where we go. Uh, we met while dancing for Neo. Okay, you know the R&B crooner Neo. I'm sure everybody should know him. We just hit it off right away. We had a lot of mutual friends that knew us both separately. They said, you have to meet each other. You're the girl version of him, and he's the boy version of you. So when we met, it was like, okay, let's see what we're all about. We did hit it off, and we were friends at first. That's where the foundation came from. When we got together, I was 21 and had just moved to L.A. from New York. I had been working, working, but I was still fresh in my career, dancing Dancing every day, all day. We were together for six years before he proposed. Now, you would think, and that's my sidebar, you were ready for this man. But it has tell tell signs that you weren't ready. And at least you acknowledged that you weren't ready. Okay? Now, we're going to go to the proposal. Uh, she writes, I was definitely surprised and taken out of my performance element. When I'm on stage, I'm a different character than I am in my everyday life. I felt vulnerable. And all the attention and cameras were on me. I was like a turtle wanting to crawl in my shell. Yeah, she wanted to crawl back in. She, like, she don't like that kind of exposure. Not when it's uh, garnering on her personal life. You know, when she eats, sleep, and shit. No, she didn't want that kind of attention, y'all. She didn't want it. Okay, but we're going back to the article. I'm low-key, so I was shocked completely. And that's uh, also something that her fiancé should have known. Don't give her no proposal like that because she don't like all that hoopla. You give her something simple and you make it turn out, you know, so romantic and it's about you and her. She probably would have been a little bit more uh, wanting to save or salvage the relationship. But you, you did everything opposite of what she's all about, fella. Who live and learn for your next 
request, okay? But that's my sidebar going back. It said, I knew Beyonce allowed that for me and for our relationship. She know how much history we have. And so she just wanted to pay her respects, okay? I got that with B.C. I'll come and give you 15 minutes of fame up here on my time, my time. Okay, this might be your wedding present, too. <laughs> but I'm sure Beyonce gave, well, she would have given her a very nice, lucrative uh gift from her okay but it didn't happen and transpire but when she do get it i'm sure beyonce would definitely be in attendance and she definitely would give her break her off some time to be on her wedding night and a week or a month however she want to take but she got to come back she got to come back oh excuse me all right going back to the article it said um i'm grateful she allowed someone who wasn't even on tour with us on stage holding her mic that really happened. It was very generous of her. Okay, so be awesome. She be like, this is my time to shine. I don't like to spread and spend time on other folks. Okay, they didn't come to see y'all. They can't see me. I'm the star. All right, that's what Beyonce must have told her people, and they really took it to heart. All right, but anyway, moving to the next phase, it says a tough decision to walk away. In 2016, the year I got engaged, I was very interested. It, it was it was a very interesting year for me. I was a victim of identity theft while rehearsing and getting ready to tour with Beyonce. I was getting calls every day, all day, saying I got approved for car loans and money is being taken out of here and there. I was locked out of everything and could barely send emails. All right. I still have stuff to get off my credit report because of that. So that was really tough for me because it was such an invasion of privacy. That was the start of the year and it kept rolling on, which made the entire year really hard for me. Then in the fall, I got proposed to. So it was the worst year of my life mixed with one of the happiest moments of my life. Definitely an emotional roller coaster. Looking back, Okay, on and now I feel like had we been more connected, that timing probably would not have happened then. I wasn't in the mindset to be planning a wedding. I'm over here dealing with fraud. So see, the man was thinking about himself and this, that, and the third. He wasn't even realizing what the child was going through. So you can already see a disconnect was happening in their relationship. But like I said, at least she understood. She understood her position. To where she said, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. I can't. I can't do this. I love you. You know I got love for you. But to become your missus when you already disrespected me, you're not even horning in on what's happening to me. It's like somebody's trying to take my life literally. Okay? And you're talking about planning a win. I can't get my finances straight. I can't even get the money that I already lost trying to recoup it back. Okay? What kind of nigga? Oh, I'm in, what kind of ego are you? Okay? But moving back from my um, observation of what I'm reading back to the latest article. Okay, she gives us another point of reference. She says, there's never a right time to say goodbye. I know, honey, because I be looking, listening to Luther songs sometimes. And I be like, oh, child, it's no easy way to say goodbye. Bye, bye, bye. Give me the reason to want you back. Love me, love me, forget do you know? Tell me how, how to forgive and forget. Give me the reason to want you back. Because it's been a mighty long time. Yes, of the love that used to be. Ended the day you walked out. Yes, give me the reason to love you, boy. I love you, girl. Uh -uh. To love you, boy. Give me the reason to. Yes, Father. So I understood what me actually were talking about, girl. It made me have to regress and think about my past relationship. I, I, I'm going down memory lane. I saw this photograph. Kind of made me laugh. It took me way back. Whoa. Back down memory lane. Oh, Y'all got me going. You got me going in circles. Go around and circles. Woo! Let me get off and get back to this story. Huh? I'm going to break my own air, but not over here. Okay. All right. But it goes back and says, I'm pretty low key, so I don't need big gestures all the time. I'm happy with one little rose on Valentine's Day. Not a house filled with flowers. 
the big grand gesture I felt wasn't necessary for me. It was sweet and a nice way to show the love in front of the world. But if it was up to me, I don't know that I would have chosen this type of proposal. So see, she already letting the brother know it was all about you. It wasn't about me because you would have did it. You would have did it totally different. Okay, low key, all about you and I, and that's it. Unity. You and I, T.Y. That's Queen Latifah. Okay, moving on. Afterwards, we had a beautiful engagement shoot with my good friend, Cecile Boko. I realized once I got engaged that I wasn't the girl who dreamt of her wedding day. I started thinking of the fact that I had to pick flowers, textures, and silverware. There were all these choices I had to make, and it was overwhelming. So we took the first year to enjoy the engagement and have fun with this new step in our relationship. Then the next year rolled around and I went on tour. I found myself making excuses for why I was planning more, why I wasn't planning more. Eventually, I had to look in the mirror and ask myself, why do I really want to be married or do I even want to marry him? Okay, now that's a big reality check, honey. That's a big reality check when you're trying to check yourself, okay? And be honest with the things that you see and you hear. It ain't looking good for Mr. It ain't looking good. She don't put him in her rearview mirror at this point when she started to ask herself the who, what, why, and when. Okay, and how this going to affect me in the end. That's what that lady was saying. That was actually was trying to give points of reference to herself. And sometimes, like I said, you got to talk to yourself sometimes. It's between you and the Lord. Because only you and the Lord know your struggles, your battles, your wants, your needs, your desires. Yes. Okay, but moving on. It said um, she had to ask herself those hard questions. All right. Am I really happy? Do I need to work on myself before I take this sleep? I was just trying to understand a little bit more. Then, of course, with work and travel comes distance, which means you have to work harder for communication. At this point, John and I were eight years in. We were comfortable and used to each other. We could go a day or two without talking. See, that's why I know the relationship ended. I ain't going to go not one day, not even a couple of hours without checking in on my mate. Okay? That's just how I get down. That's how you know it's love, honey. She, talking, she can go a day or two without talking to him. Now, nah, y'all weren't ready. You weren't ready for this man. You were probably ready, but not with this man. You see what I'm saying? Moving on back to the article. It said we could, okay, and I just felt like we weren't on the same page anymore. We had different goals and dreams work-wise, and our friendship was kind of a fading away. We ultimately decided to take some space. The space turned into a break, and the break turned into a breakup. You either grow together or you grow apart. I don't look back and feel that I wasted my time. We had a great run while it lasted, and I learned a lot. I needed to be a little selfish. It was time for Ashley to date Ashley. Sometimes it's easier to deal with things when you're away and busy. This was doing on the On The Run tour. I had uh, to show every night. I had a show every night and I was rehearsing during the days when we decided to take the break. I was still on the road. It was cool because we were already, we were already separated. So I thought, What's the big difference? It really hit home when I got off the road in October. I was living in my LA, I was living my LA life. Now without him, and he had been a part of that life for the past eight years. It was a transition. But what I realized is that I went through all the heartache and hurt during the last couple of years when I felt the relationship was going downhill, but was trying to stick it out. But then once we called it quits, it was almost like a relief. I was floating at the top of the pool. I focused hard on myself, my energy, and the energies I was allowing into my life. I started eating healthier and working out more, focusing on my clothing and swim line. I've been, I've done so many great things being out of that relationship, things that are actually for me. I can be a very selfless person in a relationship. Everything is about us, we and our. I need to be a little selfish, okay? It was time for Ashley today, Ashley. All right, with us having such a public engagement, people started catching on. I started seeing social media comments like, are you guys still together? And where's the ring? I start to think, am I letting people down? Beyonce gave me such a huge platform for our engagement, but things happen and life happens. I had a great family, or I have a great family and parents. I also have the people I tour with and people who've been in the Beyonce camp and have watched me grow up throughout the years. We watched each other grow, go through relationships and different things. They were my tribe on tour. 
I'll say how my LA friends who aren't in the industry. Overall, I have a tight circle. That's all good people. They're all good people and have always been there for me. Okay, the glow up. That's the second phase. Oh, well, you know, we don't hit many phases, okay? I'm not done performing. I want to add more and get behind the scenes. I like development and sharing with the up-and-coming generation what I've learned, whether it leads to a TV show or film down the line. I can see myself doing that in creative Well, doing that in a creative world once I'm done performing or done being a performer. I also love working on my clothing line with Piece of L.A. and swimsuit line, fade design, swimsuit line. They say millionaires become millionaires with seven streams of income. So I'm working on my seven. All right. I still believe in love and marriage. I come from two parents who have been together my whole life and are still happily married. I do see that in my future. I want that. I just think the timing wasn't right for me. And I maybe it just wasn't meant to be with him. I am dating, but I'm focused. They say you never can. Well, let me say. They say you can never love somebody till you fully love yourself. That's facts. That's true, honey. You live it in your truth, and you know who you are. All right. So I'm falling in love with myself, and then I am open to love coming along with that. You don't have to have a six pack and be six three. I want somebody to make me laugh. We have to connect on a spiritual level. We have to trust and communicate. I'm excited to see where my future takes me. What's important about my story is showing that we're all human. Just because you're on stage with a superstar or have X amount of followers doesn't mean we don't go through things. Now she's speaking facts again. Okay. I know a lot of women can relate. I can, girl. I can. And you, oh, you my shero. You are my shero. Okay. Um, I think it's important for women to care and love on ourselves like we would somebody else. Our mental and physical health plays a role in our overall happiness. The breakup has been one of the best decisions I've made in years. It was time just because things don't work out doesn't mean we failed ourselves or anyone else. This is a new door that leads to a new pathway. I'm happy about where my life is going. Okay, and that was her love letter to all women who are struggling with whether they should be in the situation with a man or woman or however you get down, or should they be separate until they really feel they're with the person that they want to share their internal being with. You know what I'm saying? Like they soulmate. That's what I'm talking about. She's going deep on us. And that was her love letter to us and to her fiance, ex-fiance, I guess, because they really weren't compatible in the in the grand scheme of things. She really had to do some self-reflection. Okay. And I'm like, girl, do your thing. Do your thing. I'm gonna have, I almost had a tear jerk, a tear moment. I'm like, girl, was you speaking to me? Woo, honey. I, I took it personal. I took it like, girl, yes, do your thing. You know yourself. You know your capabilities. You know your flaws. You know when you don't want to be hooked up with nobody. I don't want no scrub. Scrub can't get no loving from me. Standing on the passenger side of his best friend's ride, trying to holler at me. Girl, she know her words, and she told us in this love letter to us. I know my words, honey. You got to know your your words and stick with it. Don't let nobody define you. You define yourself. Oh, I, I'm a girl. I understand. I understand. I'm 51. I understand, girl. I've been where you are. Had to learn that lesson the hard way. But, hey, you were very more defined than I was in the intellect when it came to the love. The heartache, the relationship, you were a bit more abreast than I was. I got to give it to you, girl. I got to give it to you. I see you. Get yours first. Okay? You eat first at the table that you prepared. All right? And then you invite guests in and take uh, tours or whether you want to uh, take their resume or just put it in file 13. Okay? But that's a love letter, honey. This child chose Beyonce, her career, her life over her fiance. Okay? I love it, love it, love it, love it. Can't get with it. But y'all drop down in the comments. Tell me what y'all felt. Did she personally hit y'all in the heart, in the mind, and soul with her love letter to us about her breakup from her fiance? How she chose her best uh, employer, Beyonce, over her fiance? Girl, that's, that's kind of rhyming there. I like that. I, 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 
I'm here down a hundred with this rhyming. Woo! Okay, it must be my world. It is. It's the day of Chanel Sport Hates world. All right, get into it. Please subscribe. Continue to subscribe because you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you every video. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like and share my video. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like and share my video. That's where we go. Yes, yes, we go. That's where we go. That's, that's where we go. Okay, y'all be blessed. I'll check y'all out next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.